Great, so to be respectful of everyone's time, we will get started. Uh, this session will be recorded, so if you miss anything or you need to drop early, by all means, uh, do so, and it will be posted in the community afterwards, but I'll get into that as we get into the slides. So, as I noted, um, everyone's going to be placed on mute. Um, we will record the session and share it in the community forum afterwards. When the session ends, you'll be prompted to fill out a brief survey, which we use that information to inform us uh, as to how to improve these sessions moving forward. Uh, so please definitely let us know. As noted, the Q&A feature is uh, the best place to ask the session questions throughout the session because we can record that afterwards. The chat just goes away. Um, but the Q&A allows us to um, keep record of those questions. And if there is need for follow-up, we uh, can do that with you. Um, so definitely uh, Q&A is your best friend. Uh, otherwise, um, I want to get into the applications and updates that are now available in the ServiceNow store. But first, I will go through a few of the other uh, live on ServiceNow sessions that we have already conducted and or are that are coming for you. So we did business continuity management risk and risk management. We are now on the third party risk management portion of what's coming in our risk products. And upcoming, we have four more sessions that go through different areas, uh, mostly of IRM, but then also our independent product privacy management. So definitely check those out. Later in the session, there'll be a QR code where you can sign up for those, or they are available where you signed up for uh, your session before. Uh, Mallory was kind enough to let me know that we missed off ESG, uh, which is on the 30th of September. So definitely check those out um, and we'll get more into the details of third-party risk management right now. Uh, this is our overview slide. So it gives you a detail of what's going to be talked about. There's two slides. Um, we are introducing a third-party sub-element hierarchy and some visualization features, which are allowing you some more flexibility with how you organize your third parties and how you assess down to a more granular level. So Brittany's gonna get into that. Um, this allows you to aggregate scores up to uh, the third party level um, and to visualize your risk concentration more thoroughly. So if you're looking at things geographically um, due to weather, ESG, or other global impacts to your third parties, we're letting you get down to a deeper level so you can do things like assess data centers um, or independent people um, or products that you're working with with your third parties. So some really cool things to uh, share with you there. And then also uh, we are introducing our new risk intelligence framework, which allows you to us to, um, and the product to ingest um, some broader risk intelligence content types. So if you think about the clearest example is sanction screening, um, and that's going to allow us to ingest uh, information for from different third-party content providers. So that's really exciting for us um, and something that people have been asking for. Um, we're also uh, hoping that this uh, IRQ scoring logic will help you streamline your workflow, reduce vendor fatigue, and enable you to trigger assessments at a better level as well for those third parties based on some of that IRQ logic. So look for those in the demo that uh, Brittany is going to share, and I will pass control to Brittany if you'd like to take control of the screen. Thanks, Roz. Sure. Happy to share. All right. So first things first, um, to Roz's point, I will go ahead and start with the um, ability to now capture elements. So as Roz indicated, the introduction of this feature, this piece of functionality is really to allow you to um, take things down to a more granular level. Um, so when you're interacting with your third parties and, and you're standing up new engagements, one of the, um, the pieces of feedback that we got from, from you all is that you were looking for a way to get an additional level of granularity so that you were able to risk assess not at the entire engagement level, but at specific line items or uh, components of that engagement. So if you're contracting a number of services, let's say, you may want to risk assess each one individually and have your score come 
comprise and include some nuance as to the risks associated with each one of those elements. Or if you're engaging with a third party that does business in multiple different locations, you may want to capture those locations as individual elements within an engagement so that you can identify if there are risks associated with one specific location that may not apply to the others. And so in order to facilitate that, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at where this lives within the, the process. It is part of the due diligence process now. Um, it is optional for you to include or capture elements from your third parties, um, but we'll take a look at what it looks like if you do want to include it in your process. So I'm just going to take a look at our due diligence uh, management dashboard here. Um, I've logged in as a vendor risk manager um, who has access to this. And we can see from his perspective on this dashboard that we actually have this new card here as part of the um, as part of the process for third party element collection. So we can see that we've got um, a few different engagements that are in that process. Um, and so this lives in between the IRQ and your due diligence. And if we take a look at the um, at the due diligence requests that are already in the IRQ process right before, uh, we can go ahead and we'll drill into one of these and see what it looks like to actually initiate the collection. So if I drill into this engagement from our um, data center um, provider, and maybe we want to engage with them on some uh, on-site data center management services that they provide. Let's say maybe they're um, willing to go in and, and clean the dust off of our servers or swap out parts or something like that. Um, and so we want to go ahead and get an understanding of what all of those different components that they offer are and assess risk depending on the level of service that we are contracting with them. So we can see um, that we have uh, already completed our uh, questionnaire for the IRQ. That's been completed internally. So if we go ahead and close this, and then return to the due diligence request overall, we'll see that the next step is, as always, you have the opportunity to start your due diligence, but we have the new option, this new button here to start collection. And if we go ahead and drill into start collection, what this is going to allow us to do is first, it's gonna give us a, an indicator, letting us know that we need to go in and add questionnaires to go ahead and collect those elements. And, and if we navigate to that, we can see that right from within here, we can go ahead and add a questionnaire that is from the collection template category, right? So this collection template category is really allowing you to send specifically a questionnaire to a third party to collect these different elements or these different components. And we do deliver you some out of the box. Um, you can use these. I've just duplicated one of them and added a little bit of additional color for this demo around data center management services, um, just to have something to take a look at. And we can go ahead and submit this to our third party. So if we go ahead and switch over to the perspective of our uh, third party contact, um, I've just, let me uh, impersonate that person. Uh, his name is Owen Orpin. So if we impersonate this contact and log into his vendor portal, um, we can see that we've got a couple of uh, different engagements open already, um, but we'll go ahead and we'll drill into our on-site data center services request. Um, and we can see from within here that we have this item now, this questionnaire or specifically around collection. And so from within here, we can see that this is really capturing all of the fields that we need on the um, organization side, on the procurement side, to uh, populate and, and uh, define exactly what each of these different elements are. So if I'm collecting a set of data center service offerings, I might want to know several different items about them. Again, this is all up to you, what you include within uh, this questionnaire, within this template. Uh, but I want to know the name. I want to, you know, understand if there's a, a retail price associated with this. Maybe I want to capture a couple of different components. Um, things like, do I, does this service require access to the white space? Does it require um, access to servers or racks? Um, and do I actually need to log in and access the, serv the server digitally as well? Um, and so depending on all of the, the different elements that you may want to capture or the different characteristics of your element that you may want to capture, um, the, the um, vendor can fill all of this out for all of the different offerings. 
Now, once you have collected the, um, the elements, and like I said, they don't have to be services. These could be locations where you operate. These could be individual contractors, right? Individual people um, that you're working with that you may also want to capture at that more granular level and risk assess. So I'm gonna fast forward a little bit and show what this looks like once we've got those elements collected and in the system and switch back over to my view as the vendor risk manager. So if we come back to the vendor management workspace, we can see in the list view that we actually have a new section here in the list view specifically for managing your third party elements, right? So this is where these will be able to live from within the workspace view. We can see all of them listed here. Um, and uh, to me, the most helpful view is this one where we can actually see the elements by specific um, engagement requests, right? So for each of our engagements, we can see what are the specific uh, entities that we're capturing. Um, and then you're actually able to initiate a risk assessment on that individual element. Um, and this is an example here for work faster service outsourcing where we've just already populated that. So as part of this specific engagement, I now have a, a more comprehensive understanding of what my risk looks like across different locations, across different products or services or individuals um, that then can go into my uh, due diligence process from there. So that's a quick look at the element collection process to give you that little bit of a preview. Um, oh, Brittany, one of the things I wanted to know is we don't usually talk about pricing and things on this call, but the elements do sit under an engagement, so they're not adding an additional cost to the hierarchy. Um, they sit under engagement specifically, so I do want to call that out. If you do have specific questions about prices, definitely talk to your sales rep, but I just wanted to make sure that people are aware of that. Yeah, that is that is a great point. Um, so we do get questions about, about pricing often, so it's that's a really good one to kind of head off. Um, all falls under the engagements category, so that means you get uh, unlimited elements that you may want to include or risk assess as part of your engagements. All right, so um, next up are the risk intelligence and uh, IRQ enhancements. So we'll just stay here on the list view and we'll take a look at the risk intelligence report requests. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with the um, risk intelligence uh, provider functionality, we now offer additional functionality from within the workspace view. Um, so there are now three different ways that you can request a report from an intelligence provider. One is directly here from within the list view. So I could come in and just add a new uh, report request right from within the workspace and, and start populating who's the provider, um, what level of report am I looking for from them. Um, I can request a, a, a intelligence report as part of the due diligence process. So as long as I'm at the IRQ or later state, I can request um, an intelligence report for, um, let's say, a, a third party as part of um, a, uh, a new onboarding request. Or I can also initiate this directly from within the third party itself. Again, also right from within the uh, workspace. So if I come to my list of all third parties, let's just say that we want to go ahead and find a third party that we want to apply or uh, request an intelligence provider uh, report from. We can see that we have a new tab here specifically for our risk intelligence report requests. So right from within here, we could go ahead and initiate a new request. The nice thing about doing it from within here is that it just defaults um, a little bit of information for you, um, specifically the, the third party itself. Um, and then those results are going to come back and um, live here within your risk intelligence scores. So again, just allowing you a lot more usability in terms of where does the work all, you know, traditionally get done. Um, if we want people to stay in the workspace, if you want to make it easier for your vendor risk managers, for your business users um, to put these this functionality and these requests where they're doing the work, that's really what this enhancement is designed to support um, and just enhance that usability, reduce a few clicks and, and put things where people expect them to be. Um, and then- can I ask yeah. you a question about the ability to order reports? Some of these reports can go up for what's of, you know, $10,000, $15,000. Um, what's a best recommendation on how you, uh, you know, limit that ability to order reports or do you put a approval process or how does that work? 
Yeah. So um, that's a good question. You do need to, of course, have an existing relationship already with your um, provider. So even though we deliver integrations out of the box, that's still up to you to maintain that and establish those contracts. Um, you do have the ability to set up specifically within the system what types of reports and the um, the uh, sort of exact um, category of report you want to order. Um, so that you can limit the um, the access to different types of reports um, by just making certain ones available, for example. Um, but the best practice absolutely would be to include a level of approval um, and, and to really just put that control in place to make sure that, um, yeah, somebody has an extra set of eyes to make sure that the request really is necessary, that it's legitimate. Um, maybe that's conditional based on the level of report that you're requesting for or the third party, for example. Um, but it, it would be a good idea to to build that request into the process. And Thank you. Can I add something uh, uh, to that? On this particular functionality, uh, we're, we're shipping some out of the box already, uh, the connections with the report providers. Um, and, uh, you know, the we're also shipping the ability for our customers to... Um, connect with their preferred vendor uh, of reports in and build this. So you have the ability to um, interact with as many of providers as you want, so long as those providers uh, are able to connect to our APIs and, and send you the information uh, for the request and, uh, and the data that comes in. Um, we'll be expanding on these providers out of the box, but for now, we have these ones uh, that come out of the box and the ability for uh, you to uh, build as many as you want uh, based on your uh, business needs. Thank you. All right. So last up um, is the enhancements to IRQ scoring. So for this one, we are going to step out of the workspace because it is um, a little bit um, more along the lines of configuration. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our questionnaire templates for the IRQ specifically. And we can see where the uh, where the um, scoring for uh, this new IRQ functionality really lives. Now, what's really exciting about this is that it is building in um, some much needed automation to kind of bridge the gap between your IRQ and your DDQ. Um, and it's allowing you to combine both your tiering and um, your, uh, let's see, onboarding. It's allowing you to combine your tiering assessments and individual questions from the IRQ and allowing that to drive the questionnaires that get sent to your third party. So if we take a look at uh, this template, for example, our, our general IRQ questions as part of our onboarding IRQ, um, and we take a look at this question one, we can see that within here, we've got this new related list for associated questionnaires. So what this is going to give us the opportunity to do is say, okay, based on the answer to this question in the IRQ, we want to send out this financial related questionnaire, right? This is a question around um, the total spend with this organization. So if it's over a certain threshold, we may wanna send out a specific questionnaire. And we can see that this, in this case, is getting sent to the engagement, um, but you also have the option to send this to the third party as well. Um, and here's where you can see if we wanted to add an additional relationship, we could say, based on the specific answer to this question, um, if the, the response actually matters or and or, um, if we have a tier associated with this um, particular third party or um, the uh, engagement or the IRQ, we can then use that logic to drive the questionnaire that gets sent out. And like I said, it gets sent either to the third party or to the engagement. Um, so this is, of course, in response to some of the feedback that we've gotten that customers that you all are looking for more control over the scoring within the system in general. Um, and we also wanted to add in that automation so that you can start defaulting the questions that are going to be part of your due diligence process based on the outcomes of the IRQ. Um, so this is a really nice way to kind of combine a few of those different requests um, and deliver what we believe is going to be some uh, really valuable functionality to help expedite your process and and automate this this piece of it. 
And that is it for what we've got for demos. Awesome. Um, let me take control back. Um, I was not expecting that quickly. I was trying to do some uh, community event links, but those are also later in the presentation, which I will uh, get back to as well. So if we get back to the presentation over here, um, I will share that. And we have a couple of questions that came in um, and we can 